Bays. We're in Central Arkansas. We're going to do another grow. This time we're going to do a mix of five different types of basil, all from True Leaf. We've got Thai basil. We've got a, a variety called Red Reuben, Purple Ruffles, cin uh, Lemon, and Cinnamon. So I'm going to put all five of these. I'm going to put equal amounts and uh, we're going to remove the gel and then we're going to plant them on the tray. A one inch mesh tray here with a small screen and we're going to spray it with the antifungal to soak the screen and get it ready for the seed. But before we do that I've got the dried basil seed here and we're going to transfer it back into a cup and the way you do that is you just once it's dry you just take and you crumble all the seed up so it separates so it's basically like it was before you ever did anything to it and you fold it in half just like so and you simply transfer it to the cup Pretty much all of it. Now, I'm going to spray it with the antifungal. You notice the screen will get wet looking. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is spread the seed. I'll do it on camera for you this time. See, it's already soaking up the antifungal. It's getting dark instead of the dry look. And I'm in no rush to do this. You could do it a little faster. These small mouthwash cups like this, they do great for spreading seed. And this is uh, end up being 30 grams of seed, 31 actually. We're just going to spread it out evenly for this entire grow, screen grow. I might be pickier, th pickier than some, a little obsessed, uh, obsessive compulsive. I've been told. All right, now that we have it on there, the next thing we need to do is wet it and start the germination from the top. We're going to soak it. All right, and the last thing we do is we put a weighted cover on top of it. The newer covers are green. These are my originals. This is a prototype, actually. And so, um, yeah, it's about four pounds of weight. And what this does is it'll help lock in the moisture. I'm going to get a clear dome. And put on top of that. need to wipe this off but anyway I'll, I'll put the I'll clean this off and then I'll put it on all right I went outside I have three of these clear domes the two inch version you can see it's completely wet I just washed it with regular dishwashing liquid and a sponge um, it's not a big deal a lot of people ask me about sanitizing unless you have disease pressure most of the time this doesn't need sanitizing any of this assembly doesn't need sanitizing. If you wash it just like you would dishes, right after you get done with the harvest, because most of your harvests are going to be absolutely clean anyway, and you wash it right after and you set it aside and then do a quick wash before you do it unless you start it right away again, not a problem. This one I just washed, like I said, with a uh, sponge and dishwashing liquid. I didn't sanitize it. 
it's it's wet and that's okay can anybody tell me why it's okay that it's really wet in here anyone no okay well the reason why it doesn't matter is because all this moisture in here is going to be trapped and it creates a humid humid environment and the reason why that's important is because we don't want that seed underneath there to dry out. So the cover helps with that, kind of locks it in, and the dome kind of makes sure it's locked in. It creates a humid environment because when seed is planted into the soil, it is damp to wet, and that is constant. And that is obviously 100% humidity anytime something's wet. It's 100%. <laughs> so anyway, this is fine. This is great. And in fact, a lot of times you can just spray the inside with some clean water like this and it'll help make sure that that's humid. You may notice here that there's a little bit of a tab where the tube exits here. And that makes sure that it sits flush right here on the edge. All right, that's it for now. I'll bring you back as we grow. I just love love the look of popping tails those seeds starting to germinate like that looks awesome this is the most worrying state worrying stage for me i worry the most at this stage because germination is critical to microgreens grow you want them to all germinate at the same time and and grow consistently up so there's no uh, differences in the size of the plants and the cotyledons and you get a nice even grow and so this you know and also the weakness any weakness or disease or whatever they're going to get in them at this point and um, yeah that can kill them all for kill off part of your grow and all that so this is the most worrisome type uh, or stage of growth for me all right this is a preventative and so by the nature of the word preventative, that's all you gotta do, just that. There's nothing going on, no issues. So when we spray this preventative antifungal, um, the point of that is to obviously prevent disease should it occur. Now this is not the hydrogen peroxide one, this is my recipe, and I have a video on it if you wanna see how that it's uh, how that's made. And uh, that's real easy to do. Just type in antifungal on my uh, YouTube page, do a search for it, and it'll pop up, no problem. I also sell these uh, if you are interested. But anyway, uh, yep, just hit it once a day, quick, just like I just did, and that's all that's needed, once a day. That basil's popping, isn't it? It looks gorgeous. This has only been a couple days, maybe three days tops. I'm, of course, I'm gonna put it in the video can't remember if it's two days or three days we're gonna hit it with the antifungal a lot of herbs don't need it because they have properties already in fact my antifungal is made with oregano um, it's a key ingredient and that's an herb of course in the mint family anyway basil is doing fantastic we should have good roots underneath here and we do the water in the reservoir is crystal clear looking fantastic everything is looking fantastic so I hit it with the antifungal I'm going to put the cover and the dome back on but before I do that I wanted to show you see the cover here the seed casings as they grow and push against this top are rubbing the seed casings off that's not viable seed that's the seed after the plant starts growing it's, it sheds its hull or husk as it goes through the soil that's what happens in our case we're using the cover to do that let's take a look at the roots oh yeah beautiful consistent the reservoir is really clean everything's looking really nice it's 
slowly getting taller and we're starting to see some color it's turning out to be a beautiful beautiful grow we are almost there with basil to take the blackout dome off it's above the tray now I want it still about an inch taller if I can get it there because basil doesn't get leggy very well it doesn't grow very fast so I'm gonna keep the dome on there and we'll keep giving it a shot see if we can get a little taller that way uh, more cotyledons can spread because they can push out of the sides over here they can push outwards so I'll bring you back tomorrow and we'll see where we're at Dome coming off today. I just don't see it getting much taller. It's above the tray, but it's not much above the tray. Anyway, you already see some nice colors in there. It looks like the green is kind of covering up the reds though, doesn't it? The reds and purples. Anyway, that's what she looks like today. And it appears that one variety of the basil, I'm not sure which one, a green one, has uh, taken over and um, kind of pushed out the other varieties a little bit so you don't see any reds I don't see any Genovese so it's probably lemon Thai or one of the others doesn't really matter I see that in here there's still the other ones they're still okay and they'll be fine to harvest and use but I really like the canopy whatever type of basil this is or if you just went with one basil you could grow them to like this is the second leaves level right now so I'm gonna go ahead and harvest this today and we'll see what kind of uh, crop how much weight we get with it it's pretty it's rainy cold and wet so I'm not gonna do an outside harvest I'm just gonna harvest I'll put them in the uh, little tray there and then we'll bring it inside and get a weight on it uh, but it's really a beautiful beautiful grow not much color because the green surpassed it uh, but maybe we'll see some of that color once it's harvested my regular weigh in scale on put a cup on and zero well we'll zero it out if we put the tray on but this is to raise the microgreen so we can see the scale here so the first thing is to put a tray on that's identical to the one that's holding the microgreens. See there, it's 12.15, zero it out. Now the weight of the tray is subtracted. That way when we weigh this one, it'll be nothing but the weight of the greens. Microgreens, 15.8 ounces, right at exactly, almost exactly, one pound. Look at that, 0.988. One pound, pound of basil. That is awesome. Dehydrate the basil. some beet and I'm going to pour this multi-basil on top of the beet. I'm not sure how much 
easily the powder will come out here. I'm going to do a little bit for you now and finish it up. You can see the beet there, the thin, smaller layer there in the bottom. And that's actually a good bit of dried basil. That's awesome. 